Hi guys, welcome to a video and a very special movie review. I'm not sure why I haven't made a specific review of this film a very long time ago, because this film is actually the first lesbian film I ever saw, ever. And I can remember exactly where I was when I very first saw the film we're about to talk about. The film is of course Heavenly Creatures, as the title suggests, and it's a film that was made in 1994 by Peter Jackson and Fran Walsh, starring Kate Winslet and Mel Melanie Linsky. So I very first saw a clip of this film whilst I was having a sleepover at my friend's house. I think I must have been about 12 or 13 years old. I was very, very young. And we were channel hopping before we fell asleep. And we came across this film and I just remember being struck by the female intimacy in the film and I never forgot it. And I'd never seen any kind of a lesbian film before that clip. So it was new to me and well, we all know why it struck a chord. There is probably nothing I don't know about this film or the case that the film is based upon. It's a true crime case. A teenage girl murdered her own mother with the help of her friend. So as I say, this film was directed by Peter Jackson. He initially had an interest in the case because his wife at the time was incredibly interested in this case and I believe this led him or influenced him in making a film about the, the true life case. And before Heavenly Creatures, Peter Jackson created some camp horror films such as Brain Dead, and you can definitely see the influence of kind of campy horror bleed into heavenly creatures. So the film is essentially focused on the relationship between Pauline Parker and Juliet Hume, and the film follows them as their relationship develops and becomes quite intense and obsessive. And due to kind of circumstances which were outside the girl's control, they were due to be separated. And because they didn't want to be separated, they came up with a plan to murder Pauline's mother so they would have a chance of being able to stay together. Now I think one of the biggest things to be aware of with this film is it's just that it is a film. It is a recreation of a real life event and real life people and I should say the film has definitely kind of romanticised the case and in parts romanticised the relationship between these two young girls. However what I will say about Peter Jackson is I think he did an incredible amount of research. I think the casting was absolutely on point. And another fun fact I know about the casting is that Kate Winslet's birthday isn't far from Juliet Hume's birthday, who she's playing, and Melanie Linsky's birthday isn't far from Pauline Parker's birthday. So their birthdays are quite close together. They're not quite the same star sign. They're separated by one star sign. I don't know if that was intentional on Peter Jackson's part, like he wanted them to have similar birthdays. And looks wise, Melanie Linsky really does look like Pauline Parker and Kate Winslet really does look like Juliet Hume. There's slight differences in features but overall it's it's kind of, um, I don't want to say disturbing, it's just good casting. I think Peter Jackson has paid attention to detail with this film. For example, there's a lot of scenes with life-size clay figures and clay figurines pop up in this film um, constantly, and that's because Peter Jackson had seen himself in his research that Juliet used to make clay figures. So there's just little things and little touches like that which, which really kind of make the film what it is. Another little fact for you is there is an actual real life picture of Juliet Hume in this film in Pauline's bedroom. Another quite cute fact is Peter Jackson would ask Kate Winslet and Melanie Linsky to kind of cuddle whilst they weren't um, shooting so when they were on set he would ask them to make sure that they stayed quite close physically and remained close to each other so that would kind of show through on screen and I just thought that was quite cute and adorable. When they were doing any kind of um, press or when they were filmed together they just seem to have a very pure and innocent connection. Ironically, given what the film is about. So there's just little touches which bring real life and the film together. So I don't want to kind of move away from the film too much and talk about the real life case. And this is simply because the two women who were involved in this murder case are still alive. And I just don't really necessarily feel comfortable talking about it. Um, I know I am talking about it slightly, but it's in relation to the film. 
what I will say with what I've kind of myself researched on this case is, you know, the film definitely kind of romanticizes their relationship and it doesn't really give the full picture of what actually happened. For example, in the film, you kind of get the sense that they don't have anybody else in the world but each other. Whilst I remember when doing research in real life, Juliet definitely had other friends. They were both kind of in contact with other people. It wasn't just, you know, they would only spend their time with each other and nobody else, but I feel like the film kind of does give that impression. The other thing to be aware of about this particular film is the film's existence is somewhat controversial because of course when he released this film there was a renewed interest in the murder case and people wanted to know what happened to these two girls and where were they now and what were they doing and the press obviously tracked them down and Juliet Hume was revealed to be quite a successful crime novelist named Anne Perry and Pauline Parker had changed her name to Hilary Nathan and was living quite an isolated life as a devout Catholic and working with disabled children and they had both moved to the UK. Now of course people are gonna have split opinions but with Peter Jackson releasing this film and making this film obviously he essentially played a part in kind of exposing their current lives and possibly putting them both in very uncomfortable situations. However he probably also did Anne Perry a favour financially and there was probably a renewed interest in her writing and I know when I was a teenager I bought a lot of her books but I also can't imagine she really wanted that part of her life opened back up again. That being said she was somebody who took part in a premeditated murder so you have to look at things from you know both ways. She took away somebody's life and this part of the video bleeds into kind of questions about morality and forgiveness and redemption and you know whilst both girls went to prison um, and avoided the death sentence because of their age, you know, should they spend the rest of their lives kind of repenting and, and so on and so forth, or should they be allowed to kind of put it behind them and, and get on with a new life and start afresh? You know, everybody's gonna have a different opinion on that. Personally, I'm very glad this film exists, but I do understand that it has caused a lot of damage at the same time. And the other thing the film does is it humanizes the two girls. Because they did something that was so horrific, it's quite easy to kind of label them both kind of monsters, but the film shows why things escalated in the way that they did. And honestly, the film is just heartbreaking on quite a lot of levels. The girls' relationship to each other is a point of innate fascination with a lot of people. I don't think there's any dispute that the relationship between them was at least physically intimate, and I don't know if it was sexually intimate, but I think there's sufficient evidence to say it it was physically intimate. Pauline's parents were kind of disturbed to the point that they sent her to see a psychologist for homosexuality. And that's another thing you have to take into account with this with this film is it's, it's based on something that happened in the 50s where homosexuality was seen as a mental disorder, a moral ill and something that was wrong and should be fixed. There's lots of different aspects to, to the girls and their relationship to each other. You know, they both were suffering from illnesses. Both girls were obviously obviously to an extent quite isolated in terms of connection and they found that connection with each other. But this is not me kind of, you know, um, excusing what they did or trying to um, tell people it was reasonable. It's absolutely not. It was premeditated murder and I don't want a kind of video of me in one year where I'm being cancelled by someone. They'll bring this video up and, and, and she and she like said, yeah, cool. So yes, I think the film is um, incredibly well researched. I think the film is well made. I do think the film romanticises the case, but it also does a good job of humanising people who were previously thought of as just like evil, evil monsters. It does a good job of offering another point of view. This film can never be replaced. Nobody else should try. This video is quite long. I could make a 10 hour video about the case and the girls and this film and everything that's happened, but just out of respect uh, for the fact that they're still alive, I don't want to kind of do too much of a deep dive into it. It is a very deep and dark rabbit hole and I think the reason why this case never seems to kind of lose public interest is because I think a lot of people 
have a hard time understanding what happened exactly. I'm not privy to any special information or anything like that. I do think the writing is kind of on the wall once you do the research. It's very much a film where you have to make your own mind up about it. You have to get in touch with your own perceptions. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have you seen the film? Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe for Insta Disappointment and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.